The following interview is being conducted with Clara Snepvoft for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It's taking place on May 28, 2019 at 2 o'clock p.m. via conference call. The interviewer is Katie Watson, the France A. Cordova archivist. Clara Snepvoft is an alum and was a faculty member at Purdue University. So Clara, can you tell me a bit about your early life? So when and where were you born? Who were your parents? And did you have any siblings? Yes, um, I was born and raised in Gary, Indiana. In 1927 was my birthday and my parents were Virginia Chase Snip and Carl Milton Snip. And um, my father was a, uh, a graduate of Purdue, class of uh, 1923, civil engineering. And I have just recently lost my only brother, Carl M. Snap Jr., who is also a uh, Purdue graduate in, of all things, home economics. Uh, I grew up in Gary and attended high school, Horace Mann High School. We were very much supported by U.S. Steel, who built the town, and it was a, an unusual situation for the schools. We had really excellent schools with uh, teachers who had been trained in the field that they were teaching. Like in grade school, we had math teachers who were math majors and so forth, which I think was wonderful. That's I graduated from Horace Mann and then went to DePaul University for two years. Okay, great. I'm really sorry to hear about your brother. Pardon? I'm really sorry to hear about your brother. Oh, about my brother? Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he started out in ag at, at Purdue and decided that, that uh, having not grown up in agriculture, he was way behind most of his classmates. He checked out the other options and chose institutional management and home economics and was a, uh, a food supervisor uh, after service in the, after he graduated from Purdue. He was in uh, the Army for uh, a year and was an instructor for uh, an a cooking instructor for um, the Army for um, officers' clubs. And then when he left there, he became a f food supervisor at Purdue in the various dorms and then went on to be uh, in, in catering service with uh, uh, some of the big companies that catered things like the Olympics and the uh, Pan American Games, and then uh, phased into um, personnel, or uh, personal, uh, the uh, human resources, I can't, new, new names for old things. And uh, he just recently died. He was at the age of, um, Eighty-seven. Wow. I'm really sorry to hear about his passing. Pardon? I'm sorry to hear that he passed away. Yes, uh, but he set a good example for all of us dealing with some, uh, you know, terminal cancer. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, he did. He really did handle it very well, did his research, and, and made choices. Uh, it was good when you have to do something like that. That's good. Um, what were some of your interests growing up? Uh, well, I, I really didn't. I just loved to draw, 
and I was really very much attached to my Mademoiselle and Glamour magazines, and especially the college issues. Uh, I was really into fashion, and uh, that was what led me to think that I would be really happy in merchandising. But that didn't end up working out, right? So you didn't originally go to Purdue. You worked in merchandising, which was your first career. Um, but then you ended up changing careers. Right. What, what made you decide to change careers? And how did you end up choosing Purdue? Well, um, it's interesting. Just today I was reading an article about how we tell our life story in the influence of negative uh, events, and actually I got fired <laughs> after working in a big department store. I definitely had demonstrated that I was not not good at uh, suggestive selling. You know, when somebody buys a scarf, they should buy a t hat, too, or something like that. Um, and so I was fired. And uh, I had lived in Chicago with uh, several roommates in an, in an apartment. And um, I went back home and lived with my parents and got a job as a, an engineering record clerk in the utility company. And uh, at that time, my brother was a, a uh, sophomore at Purdue. And we had always gone to uh, Purdue weekends, football, and so forth. So Purdue was a very familiar place for me. And uh, he began, my brother began to uh, encourage me with, with the idea that I could go back to school. And so after about a year and a half of uh, going to visit him, a couple of times he had me down for a weekend and uh, just he, his efforts of convincing me that even at the ripe old age of I guess 23, <laughs> 24, I could go back to school as an undergraduate and so I applied for transferring my credits and um, entered Purdue in uh, the spring semester of 1950, uh, much to his uh, delight. And uh, I lived in Wood Hall. Uh, I looked through the uh, catalog and was very interested in the option in home economics of housing. Definitely, I needed to choose a major that was uh, would utilize the credits I already had, and uh, home economics was the choice to make. This particular option was had a very small class. Um, there were only oh, eight, eight or ten of us. Oh wow. That. <laughs> this is really something. Yeah, it's and very small. It, I, well, it required, um, it, well, it had some special courses that were only offered certain semesters. And uh, the, the uh, drafting course that was tra tailored for the, these uh, students was not available that semester when I entered school. Uh, I had actually had um, engineering drawing or drafting um, in junior high level. I don't remember exactly which grade, for a short time, like six weeks. And so I did have some experience with that. And uh, my dad encouraged me to take the engineering, the general engineering test for credit in that course so that I could go ahead with some of the other courses with, that would, be, would follow. And so I took that test, and when I went in to get it, to get the grade,
paid. Um, and I might add, I was very frustrated by the whole thing. <laughs> it was one of those right minus wrong tests. And when I went in to talk to Dr. Uh, Thompson about it, he uh, informed me that I had gotten every answer that I had answered correct, but uh, that I had not answered enough questions to pass the test. And he oh. said, you know, why did you do that? I explained it was right minus wrong. So that right away got their attention, and they did give me um, a pass to take the actual engineer's engineering drawing. And I had two semesters of that and did very well in it. And I think that right there, that, that got me an in with that department. But I went on, um, the courses in this option were unusual. Uh, they included um, uh, industrial management, city planning, landscaping, uh, all of the architectural courses that are basic to an architectural core, uh, a curriculum. And, um, Let's see what else. Electricity in the home, and uh, did I say air conditioning and heating? And they were taught by the various professors in these various uh, departments. It went from agricultural to mechanical engineering to the shops, which Purdue had at that time. And uh, we got basics in all of those areas. And as well as the home economics courses in, in uh, home decorating and appliances. And uh, it was really a great combination. And when we finished this, we were able to, de to design and uh, make the detailed drawings for a, a residence, a wooden frame residence. Wow. That's, it, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's very, uh, I find it very interesting. Um, so it was still a home economics degree, but it had so many elements of engineering. Was this, yeah. um, was this kind of, I guess, sub degree in home economics, was it still, was it still geared towards women? Uh, yes. It you know, it was, it was always associated with women, and and uh, it was uh, one amusing thing was that my brother and I used to pass each other on campus, and I was headed for the engineering buildings, and he was educated. He was headed for the uh, home economics. <laughs> <laughs> so opposite was, from what you would expect. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, did you ever have any courses with Dr. Lillian Gilbreth? Did I what? Did you ever have any courses with Dr. Lillian Gilbreth? Uh, we had meetings with her. She was, uh, not at Purdue, but she re visited regularly, and I just went through my mortarboard calendars the other day. I didn't realize I had saved them, but they were up there on the shelf. And um, in two different spots, I had notes that we met with her. Um, I remember the last one, we were in the uh, library in the, uh, I, think it, it, I forget the formal title, but it was in the, one of the uh, power plant administration building, something like that, next to the mechanical engineering building. And uh, it was a coffee hour, and there were maybe six or eight of us with her. And I remember her uh, complaining about her ears being stopped up from flying in. In those <laughs> days, he, she could fly right into the Purdue uh, uh, airport. And... Uh, 
just recently when I decided to look her up on my iPad and I realized that she was only in her 70s and I thought at the time she seemed like a really old lady. <laughs> well, you were in your 20s. It was, it was interesting. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so other than, I guess, were there a lot of women on campus when you attended Purdue? Pardon? Were there uh, many women on campus when you were attending Purdue? I think the ratio was about five to one, and I must admit I was kind of fascinated by that because uh, it just seemed impossible, <laughs> you know, that it could be like that. Um, and there were different rules for women and men. Uh, we had hours for the dorms, and they locked the door. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I lived in Woodhall for three semesters, uh, the first semester, and then the, the next year I uh, was on student staff in a freshman dorm, and uh, I, I got into trouble once because I, the first semester I was there, because I had, I knew some um, friends of my mother's who had invited me to go to a gathering that was going to last longer than our hours. And I left a message with our counselor that I was going to be late. I couldn't find her to personally ask, you know, let her know about that. And it was early in my residence there, and I got a, a lecture because I think they were afraid I was going to try and break the rules on a regular basis. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a couple of other interesting things about that first semester. Um, one, I remember sitting behind my closed, locked door in the dorm during a panty raid. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> which was, you know, the latest fad. And the other, much more uplifting than that, one of my neighbors on that wing in Woodhall was May Jewel Gong, and she was a, she played the clarinet, and she wanted to be in the band. And at that time, the marching band was a military band. It was before uh, uh, Spots Emmerich re retired. And she kept trying and trying out to get in the band. And she eventually did. She was the first woman to be in the, the band. Oh, wow. So that was a triumph. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I didn't realize that women weren't allowed in the band, but I guess that makes sense since it was a military, primarily military yeah. band. Yes. Did anyone get in trouble for the panty raids? Did what? Did any of, uh, did anyone get in trouble from the panty raids? I, I didn't, I still didn't get that. Okay, I'll try again. Did anyone get in trouble from the panty raids that you mentioned before? Oh, no, I, I don't know. It was okay as far as I know. Uh, <laughs> it, it was pretty simple, I, but it's one of those things that can develop into something more than anyone meant it to be. mentioned being in mortar board, were you involved in any other school activities or organizations as well? Uh, I was not in mortar board. Oh. Uh, they, they just 
sold calendars to raise money, and it was it was a really nice calendar book that was good for keeping track of exams and things like that. Oh, okay. Um, yes, I I was uh, actually I participated in the uh, women's uh, engineering group. It was. Uh, uh, I, both when I was a student and, of course, then when I was uh, teaching. Um, at, actually, I didn't do I, a lot, and yet there were, there were various activities that were going on. I went through Rush uh, when I was a senior, or when I was a junior, and Rush was... Um, uh, in the fall, the spring semester um, deferred, and that was another thing my brother encouraged me to do. He said, you know, you'll enjoy it. And uh, I did. I pledged Kappa Kappa Gamma, and all of my pledge sisters were seven years younger than I was, <laughs> but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, that's good. And I was both, uh, both a senior and a first year initiate my senior year. So I actually had two groups that I that I had ties with, uh, my pledge class and my senior class. And I've kept in touch with a number of them through oh, the year. Oh, that's great. So uh, we, were, we were in various activities like um, there was the university sing and um, other there was some kind of a drama uh, skit type of uh, competition I think one of the great things was those those activities put us on that big music hall stage with all of the tech no, no, technology that they had, it was quite an experience to, to perform on that stage. That sounds like a and lot of fun. at that time, it was like, what, six seats less than Radio City Music Hall, something like that. <laughs> it was a big place. Wow. So you really enjoyed the sorority experience? I really enjoyed it. I That's think great. one of the reasons I enjoyed it was because I sort of had what was important and what wasn't in the right place. And uh, it was not all old hat to me as a senior. I think I probably enjoyed it more because I had not developed senioritis like so many do <laughs> with song practice and all those mm -hmm. things. And so you mentioned you were in an engineering society. Was that the Society of Women Engineers? Yes. Oh, great. And so what kind of activities did you do as part of that society? As part of what? What did you do as part of that society? Did you have meetings? Uh, I, you know, I don't, I, we had meetings and I do not remember that it was a very um, formalized uh, organization at that time. I have no idea what we talked about, but I imagine some of our experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and, and more just got to know each other. It was a small group, of course. Mm -hmm. about, do you remember about how many people there were when you were there? No, I, I ran across something in those calendars that I had to look up in the debris. Pi Omicron was a, 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 a women in engineering, and I do not remember anything about that. Oh, okay, But I recognized some of the people in the picture. I wasn't in it, so I don't know. Okay. And so what, other than these activities and organizations, uh, what else did you do for fun on campus? Well, there were lots of dances. 
between the union, the dances at the union, and the uh, uh, various housing units. Um, I, I really uh, do not remember participating in other uh, clubs or activities. I did become a, a I was an, an invited to Amakra Nu, which is a home economics ma um, honorary uh, in my senior year. And uh, it seems to me I mostly went to those meetings. And uh, as far as as far as hanging out around, it was either the uh, sweet shop or there was a uh, coffee shop on the corner of Third and University that near near the Armory. I think it was called the Gold and Black or the Black and Gold. Okay. I remember spending a, t a lot of time in there. <laughs> okay, I haven't seen that, but I'm fairly new here too, so it might still be here. Um, but you're you talking know, about. Uh, I, I checked on Google Earth, and there's a great big building there now. Oh, okay. And then you t you're talking about Pappy's Sweet Shop? Is that right? Well, I did. Pardon? The Sweet Shop you're talking about, is that Pappy's? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's still here. That one I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> um... So I guess a little bit more about your experience being kind of half in engineering, half in home economics. Um, did any specific faculty members have uh, an impact on you while you were here? Like, did you have a mentor? Uh, yes. I, there were a number of professors in the uh, general engineering, the engineering graphics department that uh, really did encourage me all the way. Um, and, and I, you know, let's face it, I was unique at the time. I don't think they had many people that uh, were that old and <laughs> were doing <laughs> those things. Um, not as much in home economics, except that there were some uh, Connections that that actually were sort of out of out of off campus type of thing, but uh, the truly the uh, the graphics people, the engineering drawing people, were all very supportive, and uh, and likewise when I later was working with. I, I found, um, I don't think you want me to talk about it after I graduated yet, but I found that uh, w some of us in that option, I think, felt that we were catered to and that things were watered down for us. And oh, that okay. they did things to entertain us. Uh, well, it wasn't that way, really. Um, they would arrange field trips for us. We went to a home show in Indianapolis mm -hmm. and uh, visited National Homes, which was one of the uh, pioneer prefab housing uh, companies there in Lafayette and that type of thing. And I think we all discovered when it came to the end of the semester and we had an exam that we had learned a lot. Oh, great. So were you being trained to be like an interior designer? Is that what this course, like, is that what this um, program's goal was? Uh, well, I think there were several different ways it could go. Um, I was particularly interested in, well, floor plans. Uh, and and uh, that required learning how to build a house, which we did. And so uh, when it came time to be interviewed for jobs, I did interview with Armstrong uh, 
it was linoleum and floor floor coverings. Um, but they were interested in me as an interior decorator, and I was not interested in that. Okay. And, uh, it, it, then it came along that these professors um, in the general engineering and the engineering graphics talked to me about that they needed someone who could um, back the, one of the professors that I had was an, ar an architecture uh, graduate um, and was an architect. And he, did, he taught all of the courses that we had in uh, the traditional architecture courses, uh, um, the orders of architecture and all of that sort of thing. And um, watercolor course for teaching the renderings that architects do of the uh, elevations of houses. He and Professor Thompson, who was the one who asked me why I didn't finish the test, um, came to me and said, we need someone who can substitute for Professor Carter, the architecture teacher, and actually back him up and work with him with the courses that he is handling. And we'd like you to talk to the head of the department Professor Porsche and see if you can get a job. And they kept after me and I kept going talking to Dr. Professor Porsche and um, I don't remember that he actually sort of sloughed me off or you know <laughs> but but I kept they kept after me to go back and find out what he thought and so forth. And they actually they kept saying they needed me. <laughs> it was nice to know. And uh, so eventually he did hire me. Uh, and I immediately, uh, they, and, they, and they found me a job in the civil engineering, one of the offices, uh, uh, I think it was the highway department, uh, filing photographs and doing some typing for the summer so that I had a job to sustain me. And um, I, I really felt that, the, you know, you can tell a difference between whether they're kind of just putting up with you or <laughs> <laughs> encouraging you. Yeah. And I felt they all were really rooting for me to have it be a success. So that was a great feeling. And Professor Wiley, who retired while I was there and who had been there since my father was a student, um, came to me before the classes started and said, I think this is interesting. He said, when I first started teaching, I, didn't, I was afraid I didn't, couldn't do it. And uh, I'm sure he had probably been in the service. I'm not sure about when, but anyway, he said, I, I just have one thing to, to tell you. You'll do fine if you just stay one lesson ahead of your students. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, that was great. But one thing, and I also immediately applied for undergraduate courses in civil engineering. Oh, okay. And was accepted. And I felt I owed it to them to start taking some engineering courses. And uh, I, I started out with the math, with calculus and so forth, and, and uh, another physics course. Um, but the, another thing they did was I had, um, the way the course was taught was it was um, in a lab several times a week and then one lecture, one hour lecture. And um, the, the lab was practicing drafting, learning to draft, learning to read drawings, uh, blueprints, and so forth. 
and um, I, I, uh, in the big lab, it was usually uh, shared by two instructors, mm -hmm. and they assigned a, an undergraduate student assistant to the other half of the big drawing room lab with me. And it was Robert Roger Chaffee, one of the astronauts that was killed in the oh. fire with Gus Grissom. Mm -hmm. And if I had known how really smart he was, I would have been scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> but he was just a wonderful, uh, enthusiastic, good student. You know, mm -hmm. and, and that was really quite an experience. Uh, looking back and realizing the contact that I had with him. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, that's a great experience. It must have been even more devastating uh, when that happened. Yeah. yeah. So, what was your official title, like for your position? I was an instructor. An instructor, and were you, um, so you, were you an instructor for civil engineering? No, it was, uh, the general engineering uh, department was under the uh, auspices of the uh, civil engineering. Okay. And then so, the courses that you taught, they were primarily drafting courses. They, they were all engineering drawing. Yes. Engineering, engineering drawing. drawing, okay. And I did, well, there was, there, was one, there was one course which I had had and which Professor Carter taught and which I, I did teach one section of that and help him with that, which was called Freehand Sketching for Engineers. And the object was to teach them to be able to do a quick sketch of, of what it was they were talking about. And that was an interesting course. Okay. And were your students primarily, uh, were they mostly men or were there women in the classes as well? It was mostly men. In fact, it was all men except for maybe two women. There were more, more women than two. I think I only had two. If I know of one who would be in tears because she wasn't getting an A, and she was so used to being a good student, and this was uh, <laughs> unusual for her. Yeah. And I think she, I think she I tried to encourage her, and you know, told her it wasn't terrible to get a B. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think she eventually went into a math major rather than engineering. Okay. But there were there were um, students like that. I mean, men like that too. I remember talking with one young fellow who was just having a terrible time. If you're not visually oriented to some things, it's really hard to grasp it. Mm -hmm. And um, he he was just really, and I said, if you hate this so much. Why are you here? And yeah. he said, my uncle promised me that if I would go to engineering school, he would pay for law school. Mm. Which is kind of sad, but yeah. by all means, I said, well, okay, let's get you past this because you don't want to have to take it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, th I remember yeah. that, that little encounter, mm -hmm. because it was, to me, quite sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure on students, for sure. Yes. And so, the professors who mentored you, or who really encouraged you to get into this, was that um, Professor Thompson and Professor Carter? Yes. Okay. And Professor Luzader, too, who uh, was the author of our textbook, and, uh, you know, he was always very helpful. Okay. Um, were there any other 
uh, women instructors or women faculty members in uh, the engineering in engineering when not you were working that, there? Not that first year, but but um, the next I believe the next year they um, hired a oh she was one of our uh, women engineers and I don't know if she was a graduate instructor or undergraduate instructor or whether she had graduated I, I don't recall that but uh, and then um, they had had women instructors before they told me but it hadn't worked out well at all and it had been quite a quite a few years many years since they had had someone and um, so I think I think they felt that my being there had worked out well, mm -hmm. and so they were ready to hire some more women. Okay. And later, a professor, I think it was a chemistry professor's wife, who had advanced degrees, was hired. Do you remember her name? That was, that was later on. Do you remember her name? No, I'm sorry, I don't. Oh, no worries. Um, okay, interesting. So you had mentioned that Professor Porsche, so the head of the department, yeah. um, you had to go back to him a few times to get the instructor position. So was he resistant or like a little resistant to hiring you because you were a woman? I would assume that. Okay. And well, and after all, I had a home ec degree too. <laughs> well, but but he was uh, he he wasn't. Uh, what do I want to say? He wasn't negative. He was just biding his time. You know, it was early when I first started talking to him. So. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And Andy, I might also add that once. Once I was committed, he was very much helpful and supportive. Okay, that's great. Um, so you did mention, so the degree that you got was a home economics degree, even though it was almost like a hybrid engineering and home economics degree. Yes, it, well, yes, it really was. But it was just but, classified as a home ec degree. If I hadn't had those two semesters of the regular engineering drawing, it would have been not as weighty toward the engineering mm -hmm. because they had tailored some of those courses. Uh, the landscaping course was general. It was had all sorts of students in it. And likewise, industrial management and uh, city planning, those were those were regular engineering courses. The heating and air conditioning was tailored for our particular interest. It didn't go into as much of the uh, science behind the heating and air conditioning. Okay, so it was really just a few engineering courses, except in your case, because the engineering drawing was really tailored for you more specifically. Uh, the the one that I took was the regular engineering course, but the one that that I would have had to take, or I would have taken if it had been available, was designed for the women in this option. Okay, okay, I got it. Yeah. So, how long um, were you at Purdue for? Like, how long did you work uh, there, sorry? Uh, four years. I, was, uh, I had met uh, a graduate student, thanks to a lot of people who were trying to figure out what to do with me. <laughs> uh, they fixed me up with a graduate student uh, when I was a senior. And, um, and before I started my second year of teaching, we were married. And uh, he was a graduate student in chemistry, mm -hmm. and he got his uh, master's and PhD, and then got a uh, research fellowship 
for an extra year at Purdue. And uh, so we saved our money. And when we were finished at the end of that year, that would be 1958, uh, we spent about two and a half months in Europe with our VW and uh, just traveled around. That was something he had wanted to do very much. And uh, so that he, once he had a job all lined up for September, we, we went on that trip. Great. That sounds amazing. I'm very jealous of that vacation. Um, so where did he end up getting a job with, did you both stay at Purdue? Like, were you still in the West Lafayette area or did you move somewhere? We moved to uh, Connecticut. He had a job in Stamford, Connecticut with a uh, uh, American cyanamid his, his uh, specialty was uh, non-woven synthetic fibers that uh, however these were when he first started out was woven fibers synthetic fibers uh, he worked there about eight years and then moved on to uh, New Jersey for about eight years uh, the first company was American Cyanamid, and then in New Jersey it was uh, Selenese Corporation. And, uh, and then uh, the uh, trend was to down, begin to downsize with some of the companies, and he was, he survived three downsizing and finally <laughs> was uh, uh, laid off, mm -hmm. but at that time companies really did work to replace their, uh, find other positions for their employees, and uh, it wasn't too long until he was working for, Amer for uh, Kimberly Clark, and that's when he went into the non-woven fibers. Okay. Uh, Kimberly Clark is a Huggies, Kleenex, so forth. Okay. Many other uh, products. And uh, that was the company that he stayed with for the rest of his working days. And so... And I worked some. I was lucky to meet, actually through newcomers, uh, an architect, a developer, a builder, in the town we lived in in Connecticut. Jerry in Connecticut, and he uh, thought I could help him with some of his uh, designs and uh, drawings to show to uh, customers, mm -hmm. clients. And so actually I, I did several working drawings, sets of uh, blueprints, the actual drawings that the houses were built from mm -hmm. uh, for individual houses in that town. And it was just sort of, I dining room table was my drawing table. And uh, I didn't even drive then. He would pick me up and take me to a, a location and we would talk about what this client wanted. And I'd come back with preliminary uh, designs and uh, it it was great. I uh, actually did our first house there and he built it. And uh, it was another case of being lucky and having a mentor. Mm -hmm. He never felt me, he never made me feel dumb. <laughs> oh, that's he good. He always was ready to explain things that I asked about. Okay. So, but I, it was, it was freelance. I did not actually have a, you know, full-time job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Were you sad to leave your job at Purdue? Pardon? Were you sad to leave your job at Purdue? No, uh, because we were going forward, you know. 
I didn't think I would ever be uh, a professor. I just am not enough of an intellectual to publish, mm. and you really do need to. Did you enjoy the teaching aspect, though? Yes, I did. I really did. I enjoyed uh, standing with a student and looking over his drawing and suggesting what needed to be different and so forth. I enjoyed that very much. And I think it did a lot for my own thinking from the standpoint of working things out. <laughs> okay. And do you think... Then, then of course, uh, after we had been married um, about seven years, um, we had a daughter, <laughs> and uh, that's our only child. Mm -hmm. And that's when I pretty much decided that was going to be my job, raising her. Okay. So, do you think, so you mentioned that you had some mentors throughout your time at Purdue, do you feel that you were a mentor to some of your students? Yes, I think so. Um, however, you know, they were all going on to other more specialized things. The, the drafting, which now is just, you know, now on the computer, is just a form of expression. And uh, the mentoring came from their specialties, I mm. think. Okay. But I, I do have a, a, one of my first students ended up, we discovered much, much later, I don't know why I particularly remembered his name, but uh, his father was president of my father's class at Purdue. And uh, we, I had some keepsakes that I uh, was able to get in touch with him and find out if that was his father that had name was in this Gala Week uh, program. Mm -hmm. And uh, through the alumnus, I was able to, uh, the alumnus directory, I was able to contact him and ask him if this was his father and, and he, he responded. And this has just been in the last 15 years. And we have kept in touch, he and his wife. We have connections, like three-way small world connections. Wow. Not so that has been a, a really uh, very rewarding friendship, you know. Oh, that's great. Um, so while you were at Purdue, did you see a lot of changes during your time here? Well, yes. Uh, the, for one thing, the home economics school is now health and human sciences. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> which I don't know where that option that I was in would be nowadays. Uh, it, it required home economics knowledge, but, but home economics is no longer thought of as, as a profession, I don't think. It was more for the purpose of uh, educating women mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah, so it was mostly, it was geared towards educating women on like home, like home things they would do in the home, right? Farm Bureau activities and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, and and it was in the process of changing when I was there. Okay. Uh, somewhat, and there I I can't point out to you, but there are probably more women who graduated with me who did have careers. Okay. But that's just a guess. Okay. Just from like the people you knew? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Knew of. Okay. More than knew. Yeah. 
And then when you started in Purdue, so 1950, I think, till the time that you left in 1958, did you notice any major changes? Uh, yes, they had begun to, um, uh, oh, I don't know how to describe it, a little less time with the instructors, a little less time with students, I think, uh, individually. Okay. Uh, uh, I only had, I'm trying to think of the number of classes that I had that were in more of an auditorium surroundings, uh, I only had a couple like that, and, and I think there were more like that, and I think probably there was more dependence on the students to take the initiative to do their work as opposed to an instructor standing beside them, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, point by point. Mm -hmm. it, but it was just beginning then. Okay. And then were there, so you mentioned when you started there were different rules for women than men, so such as the curfew. Were any of these rules starting to kind of shift and change? Were any of these rules what? Starting to change? Not, the hours I don't believe were. No. Uh, oh, another thing on campus, we we did not wear pants. Oh, yeah. We, I always forget about that. <laughs> uh, well, I, you know, we, had, we could wear jeans to labs. Okay. Like art and chemistry and so forth. And I remember after the prom, I had a Saturday morning trig class, and this was when I was an undergraduate. And I went to that class in a pair of wool slacks, and I thought I was being very bold. <laughs> so were you but, not allowed to wear pants? or No, it was just, you didn't. Okay. <laughs> and, and I think that probably if you did, you, somebody would have spoken to you in your... Uh, either in the dorm or in the sorority house, <laughs> <laughs> pointed out that this was, was really not yeah. the way to go. <laughs> Did anyone com in your trade class comment? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, how do you think um, your time here at Purdue influenced you later in life? I think it must have had a huge effect on me. I, I really because uh, it, you know how we all sort of it takes us a while to accept who we really are. Mm -hmm. And and I just uh, it. I don't know how much the job I had before I went to Purdue gave me confidence at Purdue to do better, or what. But uh, I, I have never stopped learning, for one thing. And I'm sure that that was somewhat established during that time. Uh, I think it was more because I was older. You know, I just uh, had learned some skills that I had not had before. Mm -hmm. Living skills. Okay, great. Do you have, um, what's your favorite memory of Purdue or your time here? Do you have one? Oh, just one specific, no. It doesn't have to be one specific. You can mention more if you if you'd like. Pardon? It doesn't have to be one specific, just what are some of your favorite memories of Purdue or your time here? Well, I, there were a couple of courses that I had that I really didn't realize how much they were going to affect me the rest of my life. One of them was business letter writing. To this day, I still 
try very hard to say what I want to say in as few words as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, it was just a really good time. It, it uh, turned out to be uh, the best thing that uh, ever happened to me as far as a change of course goes. That's amazing. Um, and is there anything else that you'd like to mention about either your personal or professional life or your time here at Purdue? Well, some of the, one of the things that I am very proud about Purdue is that they're still handing diplomas with the student's name on them mm -hmm. at graduation. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do really feel that uh, there, I, I still feel just from my niece and my nephew who both went to Purdue that there is a real attempt to uh, personalize as much as possible that huge operation. <laughs> and I, I was thinking about graduation. When I graduated, it, it, I remember that it seemed to me that the faculty that was involved in putting that all together, gathering us in the armory and getting us lined up and everything, really wanted to do that for us. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. I hope that feeling is there today. Great. And one thing that I forgot to mention or to ask, when when did you officially graduate? What year? Uh, 1954. 1954. Okay. And so do you really rem have fond memories of your graduation and your commencement ceremonies or ceremony? Uh, pardon? Do you have, uh, what was your graduation ceremony like? My fam my family. Oh, oh I, your I, commencement. I have, my mother and dad were there. My mm -hmm. brother wasn't there, I guess, because he was in the service. I'm not sure whether he was there or not. Is that what you wanted to know? Oh, yeah. I was just wondering if you had, um, like, good memories of your commencement. Well, that part, the, the part of getting us all together and ready to march down the mall and through to the uh, music hall, uh, I, I remember that uh, mm -hmm. as being, you know, an awful lot of faculty had to get together and get us all going, and they all seemed to be very much wanting to do it and, you know, making it an occasion for us. The other thing is I really like that the president of Purdue is the one who makes the address. Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, uh, well, that's all the questions I had. Is there anything else that you would like to mention? No, I thank you for doing this. I think this is a neat idea. I hope people are going to be able to use these for references when they have something I want to work on. I'm sure they will. This was uh, this was a very very interesting um, conversation. So thank you.